Oh, it's Jessica here. I'm going to show you how to make a firefighter candy bag hose. The reason I did this is the footage that you're seeing right now is from 2012, and that is my godson. He was only five then, I can't believe this. But I made him one, and I'm going to make one for my daughter. I went to Costco and I found this awesome firefighter costume and I couldn't pass it up. So I wanted to replicate the hose that I made for my godson. It was a hit back then. I went back to Dollar Tree because that is actually where I found the yellow watering tin that I used for my godsons back in 2012. And I found this little pink tin that was probably left over from their summer collection because it was the only one in the store. I was considering these white cups. They also had red, which would have worked as well, but I decided to go with the pink one because it had the handle and I thought it would add to the fire hose effect. I embraced the pink because it was for my daughter and I wasn't afraid of it being the tin or aluminum because I had already dealt with it and I knew what I was gonna do since I had already done it in the past. So if you get the plastic ones, I would use the same technique. So I went ahead and just drilled pilot holes on the bottom of the tin. However, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if I would have used just a can opener on the bottom of my tin if it would have came out because then I would have had like this really clean edge. It would have been a lot less work for me. <laughs> And then I just used some clippers to try to clip off any really sharp pokey edges and pushed the edges down towards the top of the tin. Then I just went through with the metal file and tried to file a little bit and get those pokey edges down because the flatter it is, the better and it's the easier it's gonna be to work with. So I didn't want my daughter to hold this as a bucket, so I wanted to glue the handle down on both sides, just enough for her hand to get through, but for it to stay in place. I'm in the utility section near the outdoor fabric for this Joann's. So this is just going to be the outside layer so it feels thicker, it has the look, it has the look with the little speckles of that canvas, something that looks dense. You need a zipper, but these are way too long, however the color is really good so if you want to trim it down that would be perfect. Don't forget your thread. I do prefer Guterman, and for this project, you definitely can go with the also thread and the smaller spools. I love you, Mama. Love you, Kara. I love you. Love you. I love you too, Mommy. I have a serger, and I just feel like I need to use the serger more, so that's why I have mine clean like this, but don't worry about that, because it is just for candy and just for playtime. If it really bothers you, you can do a zigzag stitch or a blanket stitch on your machine. Give it a clean cut and then run it through your machine. Right now, what you want to find out is how much of this fabric you're gonna need. The larger part of your cup, that is where your candy wants to be inserted, so it creates like a funnel for the candy to go down. So again, if you're using tin and not plastic like I did, please be careful even right now when I'm touching it. So we will cover that up later. Nine and three quarters is the diameter of the bottom of my cup. I'm gonna add half inch on this side and half inch of this side for seam allowance. So that is one inch total. So I need 10 and three quarters inch by 40 inches in length, which means if you have this before you go shopping for your fabric, then you'll know how much to get before you go and get them cut. If you are gonna make your own strap, then you need more fabric. If you're gonna buy a belt strip, then you don't need more fabric. So I need about five inches to make my strap. Roughly this project's gonna take a half a yard because 18 inches is a half a yard. I'm making it for a toddler. Now for my strap, um, you really just need an inch for it to be kind of comfortable for the kid. Less might dig, but it is no problem there. The strap isn't that important. It's just so the kid can carry the candy around and you don't have to. <laughs> if you want to go to the store and buy belt fabric to make your strap, then the strap will already be done and you just have to sew it into the seam. This one's $2.99. However, this one is sold in two yards. 
but it's $5.99. So I measured my daughter from her shoulder to her opposite hip, got that measurement, added a few inches, and roughly just rounded up to be three quarters of a yard. So this is just some scrap fabric that I have left over from my utility fabric. So as you can see, I'm just going to rough cut it at 27 inches, and I'm not too worried about that because it's going to be sewn into the seam. Next, you just want to make a bias tape. You just fold it in half, and since this fabric's pretty dense. You can just hand press it. You don't have to pull out the iron if you don't want to. So you're just going to fold it in half, make a crease, open it up, fold the raw edge into the center, make a crease, fold the opposite raw edge into the center, make a crease, fold it in half and recrease your original crease. Then you're going to go ahead and take it to your sewing machine, sew both sides down so that it looks like a strap. So you can see from the example how rough I kind of just did. I didn't even press it with the iron. I just used my fingers and this is really how nice it came out. So now we're gonna go back to this right side up and what we're gonna do is fold this in half lengthwise to create a tube. And I'm gonna throw some pins in here. So now decide what half is your top half. So I'm just gonna go with this being my top half. I'm gonna put a mark here. I'm gonna find my center, mark it. So you just put a mark on the seam so it's hidden. And then with this half, my marks here, with this half being the top half, and you have your 10 to 12 inch zipper, mine is roughly 11 inches, and this is just a scrap I have. Since this is pink, I'm gonna go with pink. I would suggest a plastic zipper versus a metal zipper because the kid is going to insert their hand to get their candy out of here, and they're not usually patient, so I don't want them to scratch their hands. If you have to cut it down, and you can create your own stopper to create your own length. For this 11 inch zipper, I'm gonna make an eight and a half inch opening so that you can put your hand in. And when you unzipper it, it will open up wider. And what these indicators are gonna tell me is to sew a regular stitch, lock my stitch, and then switch my machine to a basting stitch so it's a really long stitch, lock it down here, and then sew a regular stitch all the way down. So when you're done sewing your seam, just go ahead and check it. It should fit snugly against the bottom of your cup. So now I want to press this seam open and you can just do a really good finger press. We're going to lay our zipper down, face down. So the head of the zipper should be touching the seam and the head of the zipper should be facing towards the top of your fire hose. And remember you have that little indicator line to tell you which side is the top. So line the bottom of the zipper up so that it's past that center point and then we're going to pin it down. When you pin it down, you're going to pin it down to the seams only and I'll show you here. I pinned both sides down right now just to show you that like the right side of the zipper is going to be on one seam and then the left side is going to be on the other seam. However, I will remove the pins on one side and only sew down one side of the zipper. So here's the idea. All the fabrics push to one side. We're going to sew down this side of the zipper. Then we're going to switch, push all the fabric to the other side, and sew down that side of the zipper. However, we need to remove the pins off of one side because of the head of the zipper. So when we remove these pins, then that will enable us to start sewing down, locking our stitch on the bottom all the way up till we get to this point here. Then we put the needle in the down position, lift our foot up. We can move the head out of the way and then we can finish sewing down and locking our stitch at the end. Okay, so I have my narrow zipper foot in and that just makes it easier to sew. I'm gonna put my foot down once I got to that point I told you, and I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this. Pin down this side to the opposite seam allowance. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this I'm going to start from here and sew this down, locking that down, open stitch, and then come back and finish this. So you see this is not sewn down yet, and that's because I need to move this out of my way. So in between those two indicating lines, you're going to unstitch the basting stitch that you made. That's why it's important that you locked your stitch before and after that opening. 
I'm gonna go ahead and reach in to unzip this. And what you wanna do is move the head of the zipper past the part that you already stitched. Go back to the sewing machine, putting everything to one side and finish this stitch off here. So I forgot to put the strap in. Again, I'm gonna go about seven inches down from the top. I'm gonna put a line here and then I am going to angle this towards the bottom of the tube and once I have my mark here, I'll have my mark here and that is where I need to open. I need to open this so I can put this in. Then I'm gonna do the same for the bottom. Go ahead and insert the strap so that it lays flat inside the tube. And I'm gonna pull it down from the bottom. So it's laying flat inside the tube. From this opening here, I'm gonna grab it, make sure that this tip here is in the seam allowance. I'm gonna pin in that one, making sure nothing gets twisted. I'm gonna go to the top one here, making sure that this tip of the strap is within the seam allowance. So I'll lock my stitch, go forward, backward, forward, over the strap, and then lock at the end. So I have my straps in here. So this is the bottom part of the hose. We're gonna go ahead and lay it flat, and then we're gonna mark on the fold. And then you wanna open the seam up, line it up with your mark, Give that a good press, throw a pin in here, and then just sew across. Lock your stitches on each end. If you wanna put two rows of stitches, that would be really good too. Sewed one were my serge stitches and then sewed one on top. Leave the wrong side out. So your pretty side is still inside here with your strap and the head of the zipper. And this is my plan to cover up all of those really sharp edges so that no one gets hurt. So I'm going to put the top of my hose where I indicated the top of my hose is with that mark. I'm going to put it through the top of the candy tin part. So where the candy's going to enter, I'm going to put it through the top of there so that it goes down to the bottom and you have the raw edges of the tin and the raw edges of the fabric touching. So now you want to lay down the hot glue. And with the hot glue, you want to cover all of those really sharp edges that the tin has and then you're going to press the fabric down. Be careful with the tin or aluminum. If you're using plastic as well, it will heat up because of the hot glue so you just want to be careful with that. The hot glue will encase these sharp edges and again you press them down and file them and then you're adding this hot glue as a barrier plus the fabric and then in the next step we're going to turn the fabric so it's going to have another layer and more hot glue to be protecting it. Be diligent about those sharp edges and covering them but also be generous with this hot glue and just continue to glue and press down until you're done. If you have any extra fabric, then just go ahead and fold it over. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. See it right here, it's already, the sharpness is already protected. So now you wanna turn your hose right side out. Push your bottom corners out, and now you can check out the zipper. At this point, you want to make sure that there's no sharp edges. Since you pulled your fabric through, if you didn't glue high enough, then you want to insert some glue through the top of your bucket or cup just to ensure that those sharp edges are encased in the glue. And if you put the glue in, then you can push on the back side, the bottom of the tin, you can push that down. So once you're comfortable and covered up everything you need to cover up, then we can move on to the next step of gluing this hose down again. So we're gonna move the hose to the side and working from the bottom now, we're gonna add glue and then insert our hand through the cup or the bucket and push out so that it creates like a seam of glue.
Okay, to cover this glue seam up, we're gonna just create a smaller version of our strap. I cut a two and a half inch little strip. When folded and stitched, the width of this strip will come out to five eighths of an inch. That would fit around the bottom of my cup. Folded it the same way, stitched it, and then I just hot glued it around that seam. It came out really great. Please thumb us up is speaking and spread it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be safe this season. God bless. Are you a firefighter? Uh -huh.